This time on Hackaday, we dive into the world of 3D printing and laser cutting at a local maker space near Van Nuys, California called Hex Lab. We talk with some of the co-founders there and we find out what it's like to set up a thriving community workspace and environment. So let's check that out. Hi, my name is Mike Hexter and I'm the owner of Hex Lab Makerspace here in Tarzana, California. We're going to give you a tour today of our space starting off with one of our 3D printers. Throughout our space, you'll see our tools divided up into a variety of areas. Over here we have our paper working area and paper crafts, hot stamping, embossing, all sorts of stuff, and also a variety of surface coatings and custom made paints. We do everything from color shift paints to thermochromatic paints and also electrically conductive paints for circuit boards as well as clothing. If you guys want to follow me down our hallway here, we're about to be expanding this whole front area into a large classroom for about 22. And in the back of our space here, we have our rapid prototyping area. We have a lot of our woodworking and metalworking tools. We have a full plastic injection machine. So of course, items that we want to use our CNC to make a rapid mold for, we can then inject on the spot. We have behind you our industrial no, juki machine. That's what you said that kind of a And we have our bank of 3D printers over here against this wall. And we have a variety of workstations throughout the back of our facility. We have nine workstations and those lead us into our laser cutting area. We have two large 100 watt laser cutters that are a two by three foot cutting bed. Moving along over here, we have a few more workstations, 3D printers. Right now we're building out our silicone and casting area. We have our vacuum pump and our pressure chamber and all of our materials over here. We have our 3D scanning station right here and we used our Connect sensor, the Xbox 360 Connect sensor, which serves as a great 3D scanning tool. And we simply stand on our platform or we use this as a freeform walk around and capture a whole area. We also have a huge array of testing equipment, everything from advanced uh, meters and gauges, anything from decibel meters, uh, lux meters, everything across the board. We're uh, originally a 15-year-old product design, research and development and manufacturing company that is designed to be an open source infrastructure for people to come for education and to learn throughout that process. So a few years ago, we decided to open our doors to the public. We want to see all of our machines and tools being used and we love the mix of professionals and amateurs ages 12 through 112 that come through our space. Okay. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Jonathan Schwartz. I run Hexlab Makerspace. So Hexlab started 14, 15 years ago as a product R&D firm. And essentially about a year and eight months ago, Mike decided that since we had all these great tools already, why don't we make them available to the public? And so while well, we slowly started to open up and we went into a soft launch for a couple of months, and then past that, uh, we opened our doors completely to the public in you know December, January. And from that, we've just continued to grow. We also do things like private tutoring for people that need a little bit of extra help. And we even offer turnkey services for people that need a little bit extra. Okay, so um, one thing about setting up maker spaces is it takes a lot of effort sometimes, yeah. right? <laughs> So, um, what kind of challenges did you encounter when trying to set up this place? Well, I would say that we've had a lot of different challenges from other makerspaces. Because we started off with an advantage of being a business that's kind of similar. And so, I would say things like the way that we grow is almost a challenge because we're growing fast enough that people are coming in, but not so fast that the makerspace is 100% sustainable, which is why we still need the parent company of the product R&D side to currently help support it still a little bit. And we're basically past that point now. I believe last month was our first actually profitable month. So uh, yeah, it's uh, looking good. We're getting new members every single week. We get clients all the time now. 
and we get uh, great people coming in and just checking out the space all the time. Okay, so one thing about like maker spaces is it tends to attract a lot of creative people. Yes. Right. So, what types of creativity do you see coming into your place? Sure. Well, we get a little bit of everybody that comes in. I would say that the number one person that comes to the store that actually uses our tools is some type of an entrepreneur who is developing a brand new product that the world has never seen. But beyond that, the number two person that we get are artists. We get a lot of artists. We get jewelry makers, we get costume makers, we get prop builders, we get painters, we get stencil makers, everything. We got a guy that was building uh, Chinese takeaway boxes for a wedding. <laughs> so, and I mean, it's just all these people come together and they combine in ways they could have never imagined. Somebody that works with Arduino works with somebody that does silversmithing and now they have light up silver jewelry that has never existed before. So you get a little bit of everything and uh, it's a perfect melting pot in order to, you know, meet people with similar interests that want to work on projects with you. And so we get tons of people that just start to form like little groups and they kind of like go off and do their own projects and stuff like that. But I would say the sense of community here is really great. Everybody helps everybody else here. Uh, everybody's friendly. I mean, we one of the things we are trying to do is help develop a sustainable model that can like be given to other makerspaces essentially because we want to help facilitate the creation of other makerspaces. So we, you know, what we would really hope is that it could be something that it's kind of half incubator, half makerspace where people can come in and they could just make whatever they want with their own ingenuity and their own skills, but if they need that extra stuff, and so many do, that they will have the access to those resources that you just can't get anywhere else. This is really the beginning of the third industrial revolution, which is the home revolution. I mean, everyone's gonna be able to make anything pretty soon. I mean, if you think Star Trek is far off, I mean, it's not. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason they call it a replicator. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, thank you for your time, thank and I you. appreciate you inviting us here. <laughs> Absolutely. Come back anytime. Awesome.